Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. The Peter Principle says that an individual in an organization rises to his level of incompetence. No place is that principle more accurate than describing climate science. This was the U.S. government's official forecast for January through March temperatures. They predicted cold weather in the West and warm weather in the eastern United States. But the exact opposite is occurring. It's been very cold in the eastern United States, and the West has generally been fairly mild. Parts of West Virginia just recorded their coldest temperature on record, and they've also been seeing record cold in Ohio. But it wasn't always like this. On January 21, 1906, Ohio reached 78 degrees. The Cincinnati Enquirer described it as July weather in January. In Cleveland, the only other comparable weather occurred in 1876 and 1890. A woman in Findlay, Ohio succumbed to the heat. That's probably not happening this year with temperatures 70 degrees cooler than 1906. And on that same date in 1906, Western Australia also set their all-time high temperature record. Two weeks earlier, Victoria, Australia set their all-time temperature record as well. There was something pretty remarkable going on with the weather in January 1906. The record temperature at Mildura, Victoria was actually the second year in a row which they had record heat. January 1905 was almost as hot and the hot wind destroyed about 60% of the fruit crop. At that time, scientists were generally aware of the fact that solar activity controlled a lot of phenomena seen on Earth. In October 1905, a well-known French astronomer predicted large earthquakes in March or April of 1906. And on April 18, 1906, San Francisco was destroyed by a large earthquake and fire. Australia also experienced terrible fires during 1906. A fire at Cape Otway traveled about 60 miles an hour in high winds. In Forbes, the fire was traveling at 30 miles per hour and burned up everything perishable in its way. The Australian Bureau of Meteorology knows that January 1906 was an extraordinarily hot month. But history doesn't suit their global warming agenda, so now the Australian government hides all temperatures before 1910. In 1906, Minnesota had a very mild winter, but right now it's 20 below zero in International Falls, Minnesota. A Harvard professor made these comments in 1906. It's odd and true that belief in climate change is widespread. But he said that this belief in climate change was erroneous and was based on people's defective and short memories. So nothing has changed. People are still suffering the same climate delusions and superstitions as in 1906. Temperatures were very warm around that time. Valdez, Alaska had to be relocated because a melting glacier was flooding the town. Emmonson sailed the Northwest Passage and said it was wide open in 1903. The famous glaciers of the Rhone shrank several thousand feet over the prior 20 years. Glaciers were rapidly disappearing in Greenland, and New Zealand was socialist. The South Pole was warming up, and the Ross Ice Shelf had already retreated some 30 miles. We know the temperatures were very warm in 1906, with record heat in the United States and Australia. But climate reality doesn't suit NASA's agenda, so they show those years as being the coldest on record. Glaciers were rapidly disappearing in Antarctica, Greenland, Europe, and other places around the world. Apparently, according to NASA, glaciers melt very rapidly when it's cold. Ice doesn't lie, but government climate scientists do. Government climate scientists can't predict the future, they don't understand the present, and they rewrite or erase the past. And there's nothing new about this problem of data tampering. This is an article from the U.S. Weather Bureau in January 1907. Is not honesty the wisest policy? It is wrong to mutilate or suppress the record of an observation of a phenomenon of nature, but it's also wrong to make a bad use of the record. In fact, it's the misuse of meteorological data, not the observing or publishing, that constitutes a crime against the community. Observation and careful research are to be encouraged as useful. Misrepresentations are to be avoided as harmful. The independent press, as the voice of the people, should be not only Vox Populi, but also Vox Dei, repressing all cheats and hoaxes. Defending the truth in the best interests of the whole nation as against the self-interest of a few. Just like now, the mainstream press is completely corrupt, and we rely on an independent press to get the truth out.
Toto has been pulling back the curtain on these cheats, hoaxes, and crimes against the community for the past 14 years. You can visit him, Kyrie, and Caesar on the web at realclimatescience.com.